So now we're going to talk about an absolutely crucial diagram, how to shift demand uh, equal D equals AR, MR curves and NC and ATC curves on a uh, cost revenue and profit diagram. This is so useful, you will do it in the exam. It comes up uh, regularly in paper three and if you can do it, you can prove to the examiner that you can do something quite complex. However, you do need to draw this diagram quite quite big, it needs to be large on the page and you have to draw use a ruler. It all comes back to how neat you have drawn it because if you're not drawing it neatly then you cannot see where you have drawn your lines on your diagram and it's going to be hard to then annotate it later. Right, first thing we're going to do is going to look at a shift right in demand if a company has a, a increase in demand for its product and an increase in revenue. So First thing to say is that you have to shift your lines to the right. Really important that lines are shifting, uh, sorry, to the right and parallel. So for this line, I'm, I'm quite, it's quite good because I've got a ruler which I can then move across. I'm not going to move it too far. If you move your lines too far, you're going to end up uh, with strange situations which uh, may not be uh, easy to uh, analyze. Um, again, my MR curve will also move to the right and parallel. And you can see by drawing it in a different color, it's quite nice. I can see exactly what's going on in my diagram, but in the exam, you have to use black pen or pencil. So really important that you have drawn it correctly and very neatly. Right, once you've done that, just a note that what you don't want to be seeing is four curves that look like that. They are not parallel shifts. A lot of people will try and draw that converging on the same point. That's not correct. All right, we're going to try and find our new MC equals MR2 point, uh, which is there. You want to put your ruler on your diagram. Ruler, again, absolutely essential. Put your ruler on your diagram and rule up and down. Go down to Q, uh, you've got Q2 there, Q1, and then go up. And as you're going up, you're looking for intersections with various curves. Now, you need to be thinking carefully, what am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for ATC, so the way I would do it is draw your points on there. And then, once you've gone up and down, you can then rule across from those points. And as you can see there, as I just go across, it makes it nice and easy. Um, I've got everything ruled in. Now, if I don't have all those labels on the curves before I start, I am going to really struggle to put my labels in the right place. And just doing it logically, step by step, makes it so much easier. Now, I'm going to label that A1 and B1, A2 and B2. B2, I mean, it really just depends on what you want to do. The labels don't really matter. It's really about making sure it's consistent. That means that my profit has increased from this box here over to uh, this box here. Or if you want to put it another way, P1, A1, B1, C1 to P2, A2, B2, C2. Okay, and that is it. You just need to make sure when you're annotating it, when you're describing what has happened, you're using the terms MC equals MR1, MC equals MR2, and you're referring to every point. So Q1, Q2, P1, C1, P2, C2, and the different profit boxes, P1, A1, B1, C1, and P2, A2, B2, C2. If you re refer to all of those things, you should have analyzed it well, okay, moving on to increase in variable costs. Now again, ha absolutely have to start with the correct diagram, draw it big, and have the profit maximizing level of output already ruled in very, very accurately with a ruler before you start. An increase in variable costs is going to shift both MC and ATC. So I'm going to first of all shift MC. Shift MC upwards to MC2, label MC1 like that. And the reason I've done that is because as I've moved MC2, now I can find a point. Now you can see here that the bottom of your ATC curve intersected MC1. That means the bottom of your ATC2 curve will be intersecting MC2. And I'm just going to draw that across like that and show ATC2. Now, again, put your ruler on your diagram. Absolutely essential that it's completely straight and vertical and just rule up and down to the points where you can see um, will be relevant intersections. So firstly, I've got my MC equals MR points, which I've just uh, put in there. I find it really helpful just to put in these little points of intersection for me so I know where I'm going and I don't get confused when I rule them in. 
Then I can rule across from ATC and I can rule across from the new demand curve, uh, sorry, the uh, contraction along the demand curve to get P2. Label those as both C1 and you've got your new C2 point there. Big mistake is to rule across from these points here. You absolutely do not want to be ruling across from those two points there. They are not average cost points. Again, we can add in our um, points on our supernormal profit curves. And I think last time, did we start with yellow? Yes, we did. So we'll start with yellow again. We're going to see that original area there going to this new area there which is going to be smaller and you would talk about all the other things at the end just look back in your diagram am i missing anything yes i am i'm just missing a q2 i didn't put that in am i missing anything else no i don't think so i have labeled everything else and there you go fantastic diagram and you are going to get great marks for that if you can uh, draw that in an exam in time conditions but again it's it's scary in an exam if you haven't practiced it before finally an increase in fixed costs this one should be much much easier you're not shifting mr or mc because it is just fixed costs and therefore you don't have a change to your profit maximizing equilibrium so i'm going to go up my mc curve i'm going to draw a new atc2 atc1 and that's just so simple this time i'm just ruling across from the original uh profit maximizing level of outputs rule across there go to c2 from c1 and there we have it a much easier uh diagram for us there we're going to go from this amount there to that amount there okay if you're able to do these diagrams you will then prove to the examiner uh, how much you know it's really 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 good to be able to draw them well I would now suggest that you go and draw each of these step by step with me. Get yourself an A3 piece of paper or a tablet or something. Get yourself a ruler and draw over and over again until you can absolutely do it. It's really important you evaluate your diagrams, look really carefully at them, and then reverse the process and do it backwards. So a fall in fixed costs, a fall in variable costs, and a shift left in demand. Um, bit, of, bit of work there, but it's absolutely worth it.